Let's start to unpack this question together and work out what is going on and why I've chosen to highlight this particular question for you. The question begins in a pretty stock standard way and there are no curveballs in the question itself. Calculate the volume, apart from the poor grammar because I had to rewrite the question halfway through. Formed by this area here, this is the green one, y equals e to the x plus 1, x equals 3, and then you've got your coordinate axes. So you can clearly see the green area and what's been formed. Uh, what is missing on my diagram is my indication that I'm rotating that around the x-axis. So that's what gives you this kind of shape here, right? Do you see that? Can you picture the potter's wheel in your mind and it's spinning around? There's your shape, okay? So when you go to calculate the volume of this, we haven't done volumes explicitly for a little while, so it might be worth just writing down without any reference to this particular question, it might be worth writing down just the normal standard volume formula. I'm rotating around the x-axis, so which formula shall I use? Okay, so I've got some boundaries which I'm going to fill in in a second. Um, I'm adding up cylinders, that's why it starts with a pi. And then because, Russell, do you want to take over? I'm going around the x-axis. Very good. Fantastic. So there's our pi r squared h. In this case, all of our r squareds are going this way, so that's why it's a y. And all our h's are going this way, which is why it's a d x. So, ta-da, there's the formula, okay? Now, in this particular case, what have we got? Well, I haven't told you explicitly what both of the boundaries are, so you have to find one of them. What's the lower boundary? It's just, it's just zero, right? Um, I cheated and put it on my diagram, but the question itself sort of implies that when it says the coordinate axes. What's my upper boundary? They did tell you this one? <laughs> I can't read the question. It's three. <laughs> That's how far I'm going to go across. So I was trying to cons conserve space. So I'm going from naught to three. The pi is still there. In this case, what is my function y? Here it is right here, right? Now don't forget, the whole thing is y. So the whole thing is being squared, right? So let's write the whole piece in there. And I'm integrating with respect to x. Happy times. Does everyone seem okay so far? We're tracking along. Now, at this point is where I'm going to say this is why I've highlighted this question. Uh, we've seen this at the HSC level before. It happens all the time. And um, you've got an exponential in here, which are traditionally very easy to integrate functions. So what could possibly go wrong here? When you look at this, what's your instinct for how to deal with this integrand here? What are you going to do with it? When you have something squared, it's very tempting to either think, and these are both the same thing with different names, um, either integration by substitution of some kind or, or reverse chain rule. It's very tempting to think that, right? There's a slight problem with that. If I wanted to do, think back to yesterday, if I wanted to do reverse chain rule on this, right, here's your inside function, right? So what would your inside derivative be? Because that, that has to be somewhere in here. What would that be in this case? It would be e to the x, wouldn't it? Um, the plus one, you differentiate that, it just disappears, just a constant. So I, I need another e to the x flying around somewhere, but as you can see, it's nowhere to be found, right? So the reverse chain rule, you can try it, but it doesn't get you anywhere. You end up not being able to change your variable, you'll be stuck with this dx, you can't change it into du or whatever, okay? So what else can I do? If I can't use reverse chain rule, how else can I deal with this power? That's um, expanding is the other way to go, right? Now, usually we would say this is simpler than the expanded form. And we, we always try to avoid expanding because expanding makes lots of terms rather than few terms. But in this case, because reverse chain rule doesn't work, you're sort of left without options. So, um, this is a good enough time to put the pi out the front. I've dealt with it, it's a constant. I'm going from naught to three. Okay, now just be careful. What is this squared? Because even once you know to square it, People in 2 unit and extension 1 still mess this up. This is a plus b all squared, where this is a, this is b. So what's the expansion down here? It'll be, it'll be a squared, which is this. Now just remember your index laws, right? This will be e to the 2x, very good. In the middle, you've got the plus 2ab, don't you? So what's plus 2ab in this case? 2 e to the x, there it is. And the last bit's b squared, which in this case mercifully is simple, it's just a plus one. Is that all right? 
Now, a lot of people mess this bit up because we're not used to squaring these things. We're used to seeing like powers of x in here, but that's an exponential. So your brain kind of has to go in two directions at once with respect to x. Is that all right? That was all the hardest parts of this question, but we're not quite out of the woods just yet. So can you help me integrate this? I have a pi. I'm trying to think of the primitive now. I could separate this out into multiple integrals, but we're starting to get quite familiar with this. We've done like, by this stage, every single one of you, fingers crossed if you've done your homework, has done hundreds of integrals. So I'd like to be able to do this without doing that weird, put a two there, put a half out the front to try and compensate. I wonder if you can see straight away what the integral of this part will be. This should be half e to the two x, right? Just mentally check for yourself. You don't have to write this down. If I differentiate this, will I return back? The answer is yes. Your chain rule will cancel out that half, so you will end up with this. Thumbs up, okay? You want to get to that point where one of the reasons why we run out of time is because we don't have fluency to get to an answer like this quickly, and that comes with practice. How about this guy? Can you find the primitive of 2e to the x? It's just 2e to the x. This is why we like doing calculus with exponentials. It's really simple. Last one, plus one to becomes plus x. There we go. And I've got two boundaries. Last potential curveball in here. Um, it's easy to fall into the trap that when zero is your lower boundary, which it very, very frequently is, because you get situations like this commonly, uh, it's really tempting to think, oh, the zero just evaluates out. The only thing that really matters is the top boundary, and then off you go, which would give you this, of course. Um, a half e to the 6 plus 2e cubed plus 3. Okay, That would be the um, upper boundary. But of course, the lower boundary doesn't just become zero, does it? Because when you put zero in here, what does this first term become? It'll be a half times 1. And then this is going to become 2 times 1. So you've got sort of important things there that you want to write down. So I'm going to subtract my lower boundary. You just said, what did we just say? A half plus 2. And then there's a plus 0 hanging on in the end. Are you OK there? Uh, I've seen a lot of you come to me and say, I've got a problem. My art is really close. But um, like I've got all of this right. And where it's gone wrong is we just assume that the lower boundary is 0. It happens all the time. Once you're conscious of it, you'll do it less. Can you help me simplify this just to finish it off? Pi is still out the front. What's left? OK, this guy has nothing to collect terms with. This guy has nothing to collect terms with. 3 take away 2.5. So I think we end up with that. You happy with that? Um, there are two things to just round this all off. Number one, what was the question again? <laughs> you know, the question was volume, right? So I should say what units this is, this, these are in in a second. Um, the other thing is, just as a minor note, I, I could write this simpler. I don't like so many fractions being there. There's nothing wrong with this numerically, but I am going to take out a factor of 2, like so, um, which leaves me with this. How many e cubes will I have? Because I took out a factor of a half. I think I'll have four of them, right? Everything's getting doubled on the inside. That's that, and of course the units that we referred to. You okay with that? So, a few traps for young players. When you look at it in summary, there's nothing dramatically hard about this. It is a bit long, right? But there are lots of teeny little things where it's like, where did I make an error on this? They're really small things that can come up, and they're the kinds of times when you sort of facepalm yourself after an exam, because you know how to do this. You just made a routine error. Okay? <laughs>